Hello everybody and welcome. My 8 bay NAS is ready to go, so now it's time to move my data and services from my old server to the new one. The first step, and most important of all, is to back up your data and try restoring it to see if everything works fine. This is very important. As much as I'm not a huge fan of Amazon as a company, I chose their service to host my backups for this migration. Check my previous video in the description below to see how to get it easily done. I would also download the pool encryption key separately. The next step is to save the configuration, include the encryption keys and password seeds. After the installation is done, we will restore the configuration from this file. Then, in case you have cache volumes attached to your pool and won't bring them over to the new server, disconnect them now. I don't have enough ports for a cache volume, so I will remove mine. Turn off any VMs that you are running. I've had issues with TrueNAS not being able to turn on guest VMs when I power the system off, so better do it manually. Then restart the system and try to mount your pool again. I've made mistakes in the past and had serious troubles to bring my pool back every time I reboot. So I want to make sure that I will be able to import my pool into the new server. Once you confirm everything survives a reboot, Power the old server off. Now let's prepare a USB installer. I'm using a Mac, so all the tools I need to create a bootable USB flash are provided with the operating system. Download TrueNAS from the internet and once the download is finished, open the terminal to prepare the installation device. In macOS, unmount the USB device with disk util and then, by using DD, clone the image into the USB device. Targeting hard disk instead of disk makes the copy faster. I was successful using a block size of 64K. My new server was not configured to boot from an external USB device, so I had to go to the setup and change the boot sequence. Check your hardware documentation to confirm how it's done in your case. After that, let's test the installer. Attach the USB stick to your new server and power it on. It should boot straight into the TrueNAS installer. If it doesn't boot up, try another computer or a virtual machine, or double check your settings. Now that I know the installer works well, I can remove the disks from my old micro server and attach them to the new caddies. I don't have enough drive base to connect all the hard drives that I need, so I left an extra SATA cable connected directly to the motherboard, bypassing my SAS card, and connected the fifth drive of my new pool to it. And it's time to install TrueNAS. Boot into the installer, then choose Install Upgrade. I'm opting for a redundant boot volume, so I'm choosing my two SSDs as installation destination. Here you also have a good chance to confirm that TrueNAS can see all your hard drives. Confirm the installation target, enter a root password, choose a boot option according to your motherboard requirements and proceed. I recommend creating a swap partition just in case something goes wrong. Choose create swap when asked. The installation doesn't take too long. Once it finishes, reboot your system and remove the USB drive. Oh, and one more thing. If you don't choose a root password now, TrueNAS will ask you to create one when you first try to log in. After the first boot, if everything goes OK, you will see on the screen the IP address of the web interface. As I am using an old hard drive here, I also see the smart error on the bottom. 
I remove this hard drive once I'm done migrating. Log into the web interface with the root password you defined during the installation and then go to System and General. Scroll down to the option Upload Config and upload the configuration file we downloaded at the beginning. Your system will immediately reboot. After rebooting, fix your network settings, otherwise your jails and virtual machines won't start. Chances are high that your new server has different names for the network interfaces. Go to the network settings, then to interfaces, and remove the old ones. The HCP is fine for our migration. The final network setup for your environment is out of the scope of this video and depends on your local setup. If you haven't screwed up your previous setup like I did, importing the old pool will be a straightforward process. Select your old disks and upload your decryption key file. When you get everything right, your old pool will come online. Mind that, so far and until the end of this process, the old pool remains intact in case we must restore service using your old server. Then we can proceed creating the new pool. Go to Storage and then to Pools. Go to Add and choose to create a new pool. Give it a name, select the desired encryption options, add the disks to the pool and choose your RAID configuration. I'm going for RAID Z2. When you have everything set, click Create and Confirm. If you choose to encrypt the volume, download and save the key somewhere safe and before copying data, disconnect and re-import the pool to make sure your decryption key works well. Once you confirm everything is OK, we can proceed to migrating the data. Somewhere in the forums, I found out that if you wish to have some service up fast, you can do a standard file copy instead of using the ZFS utilities. I did that with my next cloud installation to make sure I'll be back online as soon as possible. First, create the target dataset in your new pool. Then, after everything is set, browse to the destination folder and copy the data over. Firstly, I did a quick test in verbose mode to make sure everything works fine. Then I started a silent copy. I'm using options R for recursive to make sure all subfolders are copied and option A to make sure all file attributes are carried through to avoid permission issues in my applications. To migrate the jails, you must first create a snapshot of your IO cage dataset. Then go to the terminal and use the command on the screen. Breaking it down, you are doing a recursive ZFS send of the source pool, IOCage dataset, snapshot name snapshot, and receiving it at the destination pool, pool IOCage dataset. It's important to keep in mind that the destination dataset should not exist yet. Also, make sure to use the encryption option if the destination pool is encrypted. Otherwise, you will end up with an unencrypted dataset inside an encrypted pool. Of course, if you're not encrypting data, then you don't need to use that flag. Once the copy is over, get the received dataset. Mind that the argument at xrx is dash l and not dash i. To move a VM, you must first identify the virtual storage location. Go to the VM Devices list and edit the details of the virtual disk. Note the path of the ZVOL. I'm going to migrate both my VMs. We are going to repeat the same process we used to move the jails. Create a snapshot of the ZVOLs used by the VMs, then create a destination dataset. Since you're moving a ZVOL and not an entire dataset, you must create that dataset first. 
You could have moved the whole data set if you're moving everything, but I'm taking the opportunity to do a cleanup. Use the same sender receive get combo used before to copy the data. Once the copy is over, edit the VM virtual disk devices and point them to the new Zvo. Then you will be able to start your VM normally. If you have issues with network connectivity, review your virtual network interface card settings as well. After a few hours figuring things out, I have decided that it's time to go to sleep. Leaving all the datasets copying at the same time would make everything very slow, so I just concatenated the copy commands so they would run overnight. Next morning, I noticed that I forgot to add the snapshot to one of the send commands and had to resume the process. But it saved me a lot of time nonetheless. To keep my installation more portable, I decided to use my main pool for my system dataset. I don't need any extra performance, as this is a single user system connected to a gigabit Ethernet. Go to System, then System Dataset, performing the change there. This process took a very long time for me. Now it's time to point the services to my new pool. You can see that both my old and new pools look very similar. First, I went to sharing and then AFP. In the video, I had already done three of my shares, so I'm demonst going to demonstrate the fourth. Go to edit and point it to the path related to the new pool. The same applies to NFS. For Samba, if you've applied the permissions correctly, either by using cp aozfs send and receive, the same applies. Point the shares to the new poll and you're good to go. I took the shares here to clean up some of my path names. After testing everything, I can disconnect my old poll. Go back to storage and polls and disconnect the poll this time deleting all the configurations. If you have forgotten anything, TrueNAS will remind you of that. I had forgotten to reconfigure my Cloud Sync tasks, so TrueNAS was very helpful here. Reconfiguring the Cloud Sync tasks was as easy as reconfiguring everything else. All I had to do was to choose the new source directory. To do that, go to Tasks and Cloud Sync and then do the tasks if you have any. And now removing the pools works. Goodbye, old friends. After all this time running fanless, I decided to check the disk temperatures. Everything seems fine. These disks are rated to run up to 51 degrees Celsius, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not going to keep this setup because I know that it reduces a lot the life or expectancy of the disks, but I'm going to be changing them with SSDs in a few months and well, should be okay. I will keep an eye on them over time. I was very annoyed to find out that, probably due to anti and issues, the devices are numbered in the opposite way as the drive base, meaning that instead of having the drive base 0 on the left, I actually have the drive base 7. I considered rewriting, rewiring everything but I'd rather keep this in mind and, just in case, write the serial numbers down on paper.
I also found out that, unfortunately, my 7200 RPM disk was running so hot that it was throwing random read and write errors. I retired it and replaced it by one of the disks from my old array. I'm going to keep three members of my old pool around for a couple of weeks, just in case. I have enough disks to mount it back if I need to restore my data. I'm not too worried, though. All my data is backed up in AWS and I've tested the restoration process. Restore process? A few weeks have passed, and I'm very glad of the performance. The hard disks are spinning at around 45 degrees Celsius, and my CPU is always at 50 degrees Celsius. The last step in this project is to replace the spinning disks with SSDs and expand my array to 8 disks for the true 0 dB NAS experience. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.